boys. I have a six-year-old and a two-year-old that love to swim. I mean, I can't keep them out of the water during the summertime. And, uh, you know, just, just to be in there with them and, and play with them and swim with them and teach them how to swim and uh, doing stuff like that, uh, that's what I'm really excited for. Imagine the people who were overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan, the injuries that would occur. If they went through all of that, then it's incumbent upon us to go through something unique or different or creative to make their situation better. I lost my leg in 2004 in Afghanistan uh, while serving with the Marines. And I remember the doctor coming in and be like, yo, you're going to start wearing prosthetics. I was like, wow, I don't, I don't even know what a prosthetic leg even looked like back then. And I, I can't tell you how many other amputees around, around the country, around the world, don't even go swimming because they, have, they don't have anything. They don't want to use a regular foot or a regular prosthetic, or they have no, you know, nothing to support them. The veteran has to learn to fit into the into the prosthetic. So we would like to make a difference and like to get them back to do something that they used to do. Swimming, in my experience, in 34 years, has not been at the top. And if you're born in the water, you need to stay in the water. So that makes that person whole again. Well, I'm not that good. How are you doing, sir? Nice to meet you. How are you? I just have the regular standard prosthetic. It's the uh, it's your standard plunge. You can go into the water and get wet, but you can't really, you can't do anything. You know, it's, it's pretty much, pretty much it. Traditional prosthetics is required where you take a mold of a patient and then you pour the plaster of Paris and you hand sculpt the model and then vacuum form the plaster for a laminate resin over. The next step in technology is taking this file and sending it to a 3D printer to 3D print the socket. I've got the coolest job where I, one day I'm printing out hearts for hopefully help a little kid, and another day it's printing out a leg for a marine to help him swim. There's been very little thought in our industry put towards swimming. I don't want to stop and take my leg off, I want to just keep going. We designed a slip-on attachment for that leg. Because right. it's, if you think like the dolphin's tail, like right. it's coming out here and then coming together. We should see what that looks like. Adding this now gives the leg a use in the water. You go down to the beach, you walk out to the water's edge, in you go and out you come. No interruptions. You're not reinventing the wheel, but you're continuing the process. That's the innovation that I'm looking for. New designs mixed with manufacturing techniques that have been around for a while. Integrating new tools, using them in ways that weren't necessarily what they were meant for. And, you know, pushing them forward, making lives easier. We're here today, uh, probably the most exciting day through this whole journey is because we're actually fitting the actual prosthetic uh, uh, with Dan to test whether this uh, innovation works. Um, yeah, I, 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 I never swam with a leg. I never did anything water-wise with a prosthetic, so I'm, I'm pretty interested to see how how different it is, if it's something that's gonna, that's gonna help out. The idea is to make it feel as natural as possible. So when he's walking through the water, whether he's swimming, climbing in and out of the pool, it feels exactly as natural as it can be. It's a little nerve-wracking to take what you actually thought up, designed on a computer and printed, and then gave to someone, like, please work, please work. I wasn't sure how the part would hold up because he's a pretty strong guy. And we, I mean, we saw it firsthand how there was some issues with the fin clipping onto the prosthetic, um, which was you know, solved by a zip tie. You know, went back to the drawing board and made it so that this is now stronger. So every test that we have completed in this R&D process is a, a learning experience for us. It allows us to take each variation, make it uh, better and more functional, and then translate this from our one case and transition it into a prosthetic that is be available for the broader public. What do you think those holes are for? Swimming. Swimming. What do you, what do you think? What, what, like for what? The water going through. The water going through? Yeah. The, the, these kids love the water, and, and you know, as, as a dad, I don't want to. I don't want to do anything to hold these these guys back. So um, I'm very excited. I know the kids are excited. My wife especially, where she doesn't have to worry about any of that stuff anymore. So uh, we don't have to worry about any of these things. We can just go to the pool or go to the beach, wherever we're going, and, and just act normal and not have to think about those things. One less thing to worry about. <laughs> It was um, when we were swimming together.
together. Um, we we had so much fun when we were playing in the pool. And <laughs> we were throwing footballs and we had so much fun. I want to see a lot of amputees who want to swim, who want to get into water sports, who just want to play with their kids in the pool. Um, get one of these devices and just let them know that, you know, it's something that they can feel very confident in and taking it in, in the water. Why are we doing this? Now, a lot of patients can't afford a swimming lift, but the goal is design something that's scalable that can become available to the public that's great, functional, improves their lives and cost effective. This has got it written all over.